You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. I'm delighted to be joined by the brilliant Jolian Lescott. Jolian, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm 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 good, mate, and I'm delighted to have uh, such a great guest on the show. Uh, first of all, how are you? How you been? What you been up to since uh, since the end of your playing career? I'm always interested to know kind of what players do after and how that transition is. Yeah, initially the transition was tough. Um, wanted one more year playing before I recognised what I was going to do. But so there was a period where it was it was hard. Um, I, I didn't realise how much I re- relied on the routine and the structure of training and being told where to be and just took it for granted, really. Um, so there was a period where that was hard, but then got myself back into working in, in the industry and realised um, nothing was ever going to replace playing and never will. So to kind of... To, to kind of have that um, diversity in, in other aspects, like doing a bit of punditry, a bit of coaching, a bit of various other things was going to harness my attention and focus me as much as I could rather than just being stuck in the same routine day in, day out with, without the enjoyment of actually playing and training. So I've got that now. Uh, I'm in a good place. The balance is really good. Um like crazy season last year for everyone, obviously, uh, with the amount of games and got used to working every day um, <laughs> with some aspect. Uh, and then similar in the Euros and in regards to watching football, but kind of chose not to work too much over the summer. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it now. Like the last few weeks with no football, and I've, I've missed it, so I'm ready to go. Yeah, no, I feel the same. It's been really tough to kind of occupy that time. And I'm trying to avoid the misses getting me to do things as well. Right now, so <laughs> got to keep busy. Um, Jolian, as a former Man City man, I've got to ask you, um, Jack Grealish uh, signing uh, for the club. Um, what have you kind of made of the signing? 100 million pounds, it's a big fee. Is he worth every penny in your opinion? Yeah, again, I've, I've, I've had this a lot. And, and in regards to the signing, um, buzzing for him, buzzing for the club. I know how good he is and what he can achieve there and how much it means to him to play at this level um, and how much he enjoys the attention it's going to bring in a good way. I think it's part of the reason we all, as England fans, look, love to see him during the Euros and in the England shirt is because we can see the enjoyment he has um, not that necessarily that it means more to him than it does anyone else, but I think it's more visible, um, the enjoyment he's having. Um, so again, that that is great and that'll be great to see. In regards to the fee, um, like any player, I think you, you judge that when they leave the club. If at the end of it, say the end of this contract, and hopefully that's not the case, he walks away with a couple of Premier League titles, a Champions League, a couple of League Cups, an FA Cup, I think it's justified um, and that is not an unrealistic aim for Jack and the club in that time frame. So, as I said, to to, to burden him with that, that tag of 100 million, yes, it's a lot of money, but I say we have to judge that when it's all said and done and if the club go on to be successful whilst he's there, it will be justified. That's right. You, nobody ever talks about the transfer fee when a player is a success, isn't it? It's just... Uh, but I that's the thing, that like... It, I'd like someone to to tell me or give me an example of someone that wasn't successful at a club and then people are arguing about did they play too much money? Like if they're winning titles and winning trophies, it's irrelevant what you paid because the job was to do that and have done that. Yeah, it just feels like a, a bit of a stick to beat people with when they don't perform. And, and unfortunately, that's just kind of the culture nowadays. Yeah. Did you get... Did you have much crossover with with Jack Grealish at Aston Villa? Did you see him up close at an early age? And could you tell he was going to go on to this kind of level from that time? Yeah, I played with Jack um, and I could see the talent um, that he had. Um, so what he's done in the last few seasons for Villa and hopefully what he's about to do for Man City didn't and, and won't surprise me because I knew he was, he was a special talent. I just didn't know how he was going to find a way to harness that um, and he has done that now. So, like I said, the things he's doing 
and done don't surprise me um and what we all kind of have to realize when you go to the top tier which obviously man city are jack greenish doesn't have to do any more than what he's done they bought him for what you've done so do the same on this stage and you will be successful um, and i have no doubt you'll be able to do that yeah, he's a top, top player and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do at the highest, highest level, especially in the Champions League. Um, sticking with the kind of theme of Aston Villa a little bit, um, obviously losing Jack Grealish is, is a big loss, but they brought in Buendia, Ings, uh, Bailey, Twanza Bay, Ashley Young's come back to the club. Do you think that Aston Villa have done enough in the transfer market to kind of compensate for that loss? Oh, definitely. Um, I have to applaud Aston Villa for the way they've handled the transfer, but more importantly, the way they've handled their business. Um, I, I think it's a lot cheaper um, and smoother to sign replacements before you sign your before you sell your asset. I think if Jack Grealish goes and crazy because clubs know uh, that you don't, but clubs think you have a hundred million pound in the bank, and there you you sell Jack Grealish. All of a sudden, the premiums are higher. Um, but if they believe you're signing players to play with the asset, you just get a market value, the current market value rather than inflation. So a lot of credit to, to Aston Villa for doing that before letting Jack go, but also making understanding that Jack was going to leave, the fact that um, they didn't make it hard for him to, uh, to, to leave the club um, shows that clubs and players can be amicable, um, even when it means so much. Absolutely. Moving on to one of your uh, other former clubs, Everton, uh, they've appointed uh, Rafa Benitez, having lost Carlo Ancelotti uh, to Real Madrid. I mean, Carlo Ancelotti, he did OK at Everton for me. I mean, what are you expecting from Everton now with Rafa Benitez? It's a bit of a controversial appointment in the sense that he's a, an ex-Liverpool man. But are you expecting him to take the job in his stride and, and really push on? Yeah, because he's a good manager. Um, it's going to be difficult for him. Uh, and he's under more scrutiny and pressure because of his history and his background and his affiliation with Liverpool. But if we're judging him off his credentials as a manager, I don't think anyone can, can really question him because he's he's been pretty successful um, with the teams and the clubs that he's worked for. So in that aspect, it's a good appointment, but he's not going to get that safety net of a couple of games where it doesn't go well or it's a negative result or performance. I think not well, knowing the Everton fans, they they're not waiting for him to fail because they love the club more than, than any manager or player, but he's not gonna get the leeway say that Carlo had or previous managers have had because of his affiliation with Liverpool. Yeah, absolutely. Did you feel like Everton were a little bit underwhelming last season, given the, the transfer window they had going into the summer? It did I think a lot of people fancied them to break into the top six and they were quite a way off that. Would, would there have been disappointment on Merseyside? Yeah, definitely. That was the goal to, to break into Europe and, and it didn't happen. So rightly so, there should be disappointment from, from everyone involved with the club, whether that's players, fans and board members. But in regards to to having fans back, I think if if after the what they, the great start they had after four games, they were tough. Um, if fans were allowed back in at that stage, I think they pick up a lot more points at home. Um, again, being to Goodison as a as a home player and a away player, I know how intense and hostile that can be. Um, so that didn't help. But yeah, not not just getting into Europe is was their goal. So for them not to do that, they they have to see that as a disappointing season but I'm sure this season with the recruitment of wingers I think that has helped I think they've identified what they needed in the window um, and brought in players that they believe will help them yeah for sure for sure uh, just finally Jolian on Wolves um, it's been obviously a really kind of uh, good period for Wolves under Nuno Espirito Santo got them back into the Premier League back-to-back -back seventh place finishes which was really impressive not a great season last season, but still stayed safe and, and did what they needed to do. How difficult is it going to be now to kind of move on from the Nuno Espirito Santo era? Because it was such a, a big yeah. time. Yeah, in the, when you look at it as a whole, yeah, it was huge. Um, but the transition for the new manager, it's probably the best circumstance 
you won a transition is they didn't finish seventh. There wasn't in Europe. There was, or there is kind of the expectation this season of just doing better than last season, where if he's coming in off the back of a seventh and the expectation that this is the minimum standard, seventh in the Premier League is not a, an easy position to to obtain uh, consistently. But this is, well, last season was the first real, not blip, but delaying progression. Um, but staying in the Premier League and not being contenders to be relegated is still an, a massive achievement, especially for a team that's what third season in. Um, so, yeah, the Wolves fans have, have been blessed and lucky to see some great football and speaking to, to Wolves fans. The time that Nuno was there was some of the best football they can remember, even an older generation of fans. So that was huge, but they're in a good position in terms of the structure of the club. I, I don't think anyone's talking about them being one of the teams that should be fighting relegation. So, again, in itself, that is that is a good thing. Um, but time will tell. Um, are they looking to to recruit more players um, and bed them in? But I haven't seen much of them pre-season, so I'm unsure how it's going to go. But I'm hoping they do well. Uh, Jolien, thank you so much, mate. It's been a real pleasure having you on. Uh, great to talk to you. And um, take care of yourself. And you.